Let's talk about adaptive testing. If you're preparing for an ISC2 certification exam like CISSP, SSCP, CCSP, or Certified in Cybersecurity, you've probably already heard this term. And if you're like many test takers, you might be concerned about what it means for your testing experience. My name is Mike Chappell, and I'm an IT certification expert. I'm the lead author of the official CISSP study guide and practice tests from ISC2, along with dozens of other books, video courses, and practice questions designed to prepare you for your next exam. You can find more information about the resources I have available on my website at certmike.com. Now, the first thing I want to share is that even though you might be feeling anxious about the idea of adaptive testing, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a more efficient way of delivering test questions to you so that you're asked the smallest number of questions necessary to determine whether you've passed or failed the exam. Once you understand how the adaptive test works, you'll be able to approach the exam with a lot more confidence and a good test-taking strategy that's optimized for the adaptive testing format. Let's start by talking about what happens in a traditional test. The exam software gives you a fixed number of questions. On CompTIA exams, for example, it's usually up to 90 questions, while some other certification bodies might give you 100 or 150 questions. Whatever the number, it's the same for all test takers. When the computer generates an exam for you, it begins by selecting all of the questions for the exam from the pool of possible questions. It then presents those questions to you one at a time, and you can normally move forward and backward through the exam to review your work. When you finally submit your test, the test algorithm checks your work and provides you with your result. This approach is also called the linear approach because it works in a linear fashion. The algorithm creates your test and then basically hands it over to you. You then take the test and when you're finished, you turn it back into the algorithm that grades your work. Adaptive tests work much differently. In an adaptive test, the questions aren't determined in advance. The algorithm randomly selects a small number of questions to get you started and you answer them as you normally would. Then, the adaptive testing engine takes over. It scores the questions that you've already answered and tries to estimate your current score. It then uses that information to choose the next question that's going to ask you based upon what information it still needs to fine-tune your score. If you've already shown that you know multi-factor authentication inside out, it's probably not going to ask you another question on that same topic because it doesn't need that information. The goal of the adaptive testing algorithm is to zero in on the exact point where the test is no longer sure that you'll answer correctly. Delivering questions around that cut line gives the scoring model the most possible information. The algorithm is constantly refining your running score as you take the test. Each correct answer nudges your estimated score up, while each incorrect answer pushes it down. Because the estimate is recalculated after every exam item, the exam is continuously adapting in real time. The algorithm can also end the test whenever it's confident that you've passed or failed the exam. There is a minimum number of questions that you must answer for each test. After that point, the algorithm will only ask you more questions if it needs more information to decide whether you've passed or failed. Now, this also brings us to an important difference between a traditional test and an adaptive testing format. In an adaptive test, you can't go back and look at previous questions or change your answers because those questions have already been incorporated into your score, so you only get one shot at every question. The CISSP exam has been using the adaptive testing approach since 2017, and it's tried and true at this point. The CCSP, SSCP, and Certified in Cybersecurity exams begin using adaptive testing in October 2025. Each of these exams has the same minimum number of questions, 100. That's the earliest point where the exam can end. You can pass or fail the exam at that point. The exam ending at 100 questions just means that the algorithm is confident in your passing or failing status. If the algorithm isn't confident, the test goes on until it is confident. If you're taking the CISSP or CCSP, the exam can go as long as 150 questions. If you're taking CC or SSCP, the maximum exam length is 125 questions. Now, here's a really important takeaway from that. Don't psych yourself out if your exam goes past question 100. As long as the algorithm is still asking you questions, you're still alive. 
It's not sure whether you've passed or failed, so there is still an opportunity for you to pass the test. Keep optimistic and focused. You still have a chance to pass your exam. Something else you'll notice is that as the exam goes on, the questions might start getting harder. That's just an artifact of the adaptive testing style. Don't worry about it and treat it as an encouraging sign. If the algorithm is asking you really tough questions, that probably means that you're doing really well. Here's another important piece of advice. You don't want to run out of time when you take the exam. You have to manage your time, and that's difficult to do when you don't know the exact number of questions. So you need to plan for the maximum test length. Here's a strategy that I suggest. For the CISSP or CCSP exam, expect that you're going to have the maximum of 150 questions. You're going to have three hours to answer those questions, so I'd plan to budget one minute per question. Now, that's not a hard and fast rule, but as you practice, get used to spending one minute on each question that you answer. Now, if you did the math there, you might be saying to yourself, wait a second, Mike, one minute per question for 150 questions is two and a half hours, and this is a three-hour exam. What about that extra half hour? Well, you can't go backward on the test, but I want you to do is keep that in mind as a budget for answering tough questions. You have those extra 30 minutes to use as you see fit. If you think that spending an extra minute on a question will help you answer it, go ahead and dip into that bank a little bit. But here's something really important. Don't dip into your bank just because you don't know the answer. Ask yourself whether spending more time on the question is really going to help you figure out the correct answer. If you don't know, you don't know, and you shouldn't waste more time on that question. Make your best guess and move on. But if you're actively trying to figure something out and think that the extra time will help you, then go for it. That's what your 30-minute extra time bank is for. So that's the CISSP and CCSP strategy. One minute per question with 30 minutes of extra time. If you're taking CC or SSCP, you only have two hours to answer up to 125 questions. Now, 120 minutes for 125 questions isn't going to give us the luxury of spending one minute per question. But the good news is that the questions on CC and SSCP are generally shorter and easier, so hopefully you won't need as much time. You can use the same type of strategy that I recommended for CISSP and CCSP, but just change the numbers a little bit. If you give yourself 45 seconds for each question, that leaves you with about 26 minutes of extra time. So you just want to pace yourself a little faster on those tests. Now, if you've been looking around on social media or talking to other people who've taken the test, you might hear talk of people encountering questions that were worded strangely, that covered topics that didn't seem like they were on the objectives, or didn't seem to have a single correct answer. Now, I want you to take all those comments with a grain of salt. First of all, you have no idea how well-prepared that person was or what they actually remember correctly from their test. ISC2 puts a lot of effort into developing test questions, and I think that you can be confident that you're going to get a high-quality exam. Now, that said, I want you to keep something in the back of your mind. Every ISC2 exam includes 25 experimental questions. These are questions that ISC2 is testing for use on future exams. They might be a little confusing, and they might cover topics not included on the current exam objectives. The good news is that those questions also don't count in your score. ISC2 is asking them as part of their test development process, and that's the process that does make sure that the exam is really high quality. Now, the bad news is that you don't know which questions on your exam are these pre-test questions, so you should definitely answer every question to the best of your ability. The reason that I'm telling you this is that I don't want you to psych yourself out if you start getting confusing questions. Those might be the experimental questions, and you don't want to get thrown off your game. Just answer them to the best of your ability and move on. Each new question is a new adventure, and as long as the test is still asking you questions, you still have the ability to pass it. Now, I want to wrap up with some advice on how you can tackle each question on the exam. In an exam where you can't go back and forth, you do only have one chance to answer each question, so it's really important that you slow down enough to read the question carefully and watch for pivotal words like not, least, most, best, or first that can flip the logic of a question. Also, make sure that you don't jump to conclusions. 
If you read a question and then look at the first answer choice and say to yourself, yes, that's it. Don't just click that answer and move on. ISC2 exams often have several different answers that sound correct, but one is a better choice than the others. If you don't read every answer choice, you won't know this. Approach the exam with deliberate, attentive reading and steady pacing, and you'll give yourself the strongest possible chance to let the adaptive engine confirm what you already know. You're ready to pass this test. Remember to visit my website at certmike.com. There you can sign up for my free study groups for each of these ISC2 exams. I'll send you more advice on getting ready for the test and help you use books, video courses, and practice tests together to maximum effect. We'll get you across that finish line. I can't wait to welcome you to the ranks of ISC2 Certified Professionals.